All right, let's settle for tonight's stories. A report from Bloomberg has described Ghana's stock market as heading for its lowest in 21 months as investors sold shares to free up cash as they contend with the fallout from banking reforms. The Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index, according to a report, the report retreated 1.5% as of Wednesday, the lowest close since October 2017. Stock market researcher Betha Atubiga has been throwing more light on the latest developments. So, source of funds from other alternatives are all blocked or are all locked up. So, you look for your large resource. And besides, uh, if the investors, let me say most of the investors on our stock market are actually international or let me say foreign investors. Okay. When the investors look at the economy right now, they realize that, especially even after the IMF exit, they realize that the, com the country is not really positioned well when it comes to our financial sector. So in order not to lose further, they would rather exit now and come back when there's that confidence in the sector. Mm -hmm. Well, it's always good to buy when prices are low. But in this case, the confidence that, the, uh, that people have to invest is not there or it's very, very low. Instead of um, looking at the other markets that are less, and you know, it's not everybody that can just invest on the capital market or invest in capital markets because every investor has their uh, investment objective, they have their risk level, some are high risk takers, some people cannot take risks at all, and those that cannot take risks are not advised to invest in equities or invest in capital market because the risk there is extreme, is high. So based on your objectives and your and even the age also counts, there are so many factors that come into place before you can invest on the capital market, and these are some of the reasons. So if these things don't fit your portfolio, then you wouldn't go there. Well, as it stands now, it is very, very difficult for us to predict that it is going to end, let's say, by end of this year mm -hmm. or even first quarter of next year. You know, right now the sector is still shaky because people are still unable to access their funds. So when that is done and people are okay with the measures that the government and our regulators have taken to actually make it better for them, when this is done, then we can say that the confidence has been the confidence has been restored. But once confidence has not been restored, you, it will be very difficult for you to say that by end of this year there's going to be confidence on the equity market or even in the financial sector. All right, Betha, to be got there with some perspective, uh, we were hearing that the minimum capital requirement for players in the securities uh, get legal backing before end of year. Now, this should pave way for enforcement of new capital levels from 2021. Jodri has that story. Fund managers may have to up their minimum capital requirement to 2.5 million Ghana cities. However, if the value of the asset that they are managing is more than this amount, then that has to be reviewed. Joy Business is learning that enforcement date for these new levels could be pegged at 2021. Deputy Director General of the Securities and Action Commission Paul Abibio had earlier explained to Joy Business why it is very important to secure the legal backing for this capital increase. We've communicated to the Attorney General. We have to make a change to our underlying um, laws, the um, LI 1728. That is where our initial capital was captured. So we have to amend that, then we can implement our guidelines. Mm -hmm. So I think within the first quarter, that should be done. Some of the fund managers have actually started, or some of the market operators have actually started complying mm -hmm. uh, because we circulated a draft in the course of last year. We received feedback around it. And some of the, the concerns also rested on the kind of business model, mm. right? So if you're offering fixed deposits, the kind of capital you need <laughs> becomes quite significant. Yeah. If you're actually managing a portfolio and people are exposed to that portfolio, then you as a business have a different kind of capital level. So it's very important that we transmit that idea of a redefined business mo model, not redefined, but clarified. Mm an enforced business model mm. to the community. Investment advisors and brokers are expected to have a minimum capital requirement of 1 million Ghana cities, while the Ghana Stock Exchange and the Commodity Exchange will have to up their capital to 10 million Ghana cities. Unlike the banking sector that the regulator settled on one set 
of capital for all the players. The capital market will have different levels for each category of operators. According to the Securities and Exchange Commission, it wants to use the capital increase to help to improve upon the capacity of players. This could be the final round of capital raising in the financial space after the banking and insurance sectors. Well, speak of recapitalization, President of the Chartered Insurance Institute of Ghana, Asante Mafahinkra, is inviting local and small insurance firms to begin engaging the National Insurance Commission on how to meet the new minimum capital requirement. According to him, the NIC is open for engagement on measures to avoid the close down of insurance firms. If they fail to meet new minimum requirement, his call follows the directive by the NIC for all insurance companies to increase their capital levels by next year or lose their licenses. Mr. Malpa Hinkra spoke to Joy Business at an ethics seminar for members of the institute in Accra. Starters, they're, they're, you can't have a business without capital. And especially if it's the financial sector, the requirements for uh, are huge because there are commitments that you need to meet to be able to provide the service. Um, if somebody says that I have one room, I want to set up um, so so and so hospital, right away you know that now. To set up a hospital, you need more than a room. And so there's a minimum that you need to attain to be able to provide that service. So by and large, you have regulators trying to set that minimum. But what it is, is that once some companies are in session, then they need to assist those companies to be able to grow to that level so that they can meet those standards. So um, as far as I'm concerned, I've seen that the NIC has given some time and um, to, um, to the players in the industry to try to make up that capital. Some of them have already met those capital. Some of them, by way of growing, they have some accumulated funds that they transfer to their capital. So uh, for most of them, I think that they would be able to meet that standard. Having said that, I'm also conscious that there are some indigenous companies that may not have that kind of money. Well, I think that as, as a people, it's, we have to engage the commission and, um, and the, the companies also have to engage the public to see how they can raise some funds. What we've realized that most Ghanaians want to keep businesses to themselves and they don't open up. Now, Deputy Managing Director of the ARB Apex Bank, Alex Kisibonso, is cautioning against the spread of malicious information on social media about rural and community banks. He says such information is inimical to the operations of banks as it stirs up panic withdrawals and reduces savings. Mr. Alex Iwa was speaking to journalists on the sidelines of the 38th annual general meeting of the Manya Krobo Rural Bank at Odumasi Krobo in the eastern region. Kofi Sian reports. The financial indicators of the Upper Mania Krobo Rural Bank continue to grow steadily. Total assets and total deposits grew by 20.9% and 23.85% respectively, while shareholders' fund also increased by 7.02%. The bank had earlier last year exceeded the minimum capital requirement for rural banks of 1 million cities set by the Bank of Ghana. Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Mania Krobo Rural Bank, Benjamin Apo, said ongoing reforms in the banking sector had an effect on the sector but was, but was hopeful the situation will change. We have deposits that have increased our investment portfolio also increasing you know over 45 percent. Our um, income our income also increased by 19 percent. So these financial indicators, you know, is showing clearly that our bank, Mania Kubo Bank, is doing well, is solid. Deputy Managing Director of the ARB Apex Bank, Alex Kwesiwa, highlighted how false information impacts banking operations. He explained that the financial sector will continue to suffer if the practice is not curtailed. We keep on, you know, telling the general public that um, access such information to, you know, such uh, public media uh, networks can cause a lot of damage to the financial system. 
it is not only the rural community banks, it can even affect the you know, entire banking system because people um, don't have the confidence. If the information is not true and the people get to believe it, certainly it will affect their behavior and you see them rushing to the banks to go and collect them, their monies. And um, as we said, uh, no bank, whether it's, it doesn't matter in strength, if all the customers rush to the bank at a time to collect their monies, uh, we should know that uh, some of the monies have been deployed into investments, you know, loans, which are not easy to collect. A pullback in 2018 resulted in lower profitability, leading to dividend payments of 0 0.0035 CDs per share. All right, now government's desire of pursuing a cash-light financial economy seems to be gradually gaining ground. For now, the innovation has offered a variety of platforms to transact business despite some challenges being encountered. Joint Business's Fred Duho explores how Ghana's cash-light agenda is doing and its impact on the economy. We are talking about a cash-light economy. What does it really mean to you? Do you even understand what a cash-light economy means in the first place? Come with me as we engage with some traders to know whether they use this number of platforms for their businesses. There's no gain saying that government's digitization agenda has brought about some positive transformation in the traditional method of transactions over the years. The World Bank's recent statistics showed that many mobile money outlets have been spread across the country, making access to financial services very easy as well as enhancing government's financial inclusion agenda. What has the impact on mobile money services been, especially on public transport? The bus transit system, popularly known as Ayalulu, has an automated system of ticketing. A dispatch officer at Tudu Constance Kwame Edusu explained to Joy Business how the system works. Yes, so you can, if you are, you want to, um, uh, you are particular about how much, you can look on the validator. The validator will give you how much money you have on your card. If you are still in doubt, you can go to the point of sale. Some traders in the central business center also believe mobile money platforms have made doing business much easier. The mobile money, people have patronized a lot. Because I think when you go everywhere in the country, every villages you can get, you can assess the mobile money there. When they come, they, what they are mindful, uh, mostly the customers, is you that is operating as a mobile money agent, having uh, what it takes, the money and what they want. I use um, MTN mobile money and then the Vodafone cash. I have cash at the moment. If I had mobile money and the seller would take I mean, mobile money, I would have paid through mobile money. I do other transactions with check. So I use the three, cash, mobile money, or check. The mobile money interoperability, where you can transfer even from mobile money, uh, Vodafone mobile money to MTN mobile money. So it has been interconnected. That platform has been merged, so there is no need going necessarily to MTN, Etel Tigo. You can transfer money from any of the platforms to the other. So that is what uh, is currently running. I'm not aware of that. At the Kuala Shopping Mall at Osuhi and Accra, both point-of-sale devices and cash are used as a medium of exchange. This customer, Curtis, says he prefers bank credit cards to carrying cash. He says it is more convenient and safe. This is what I use all the time, especially when I'm doing my grocery shopping and all that. I always use my Visa card. Have you ever faced any inconvenience anywhere with this card before? No, this is what I use all the time. So as we are gearing up towards a cashless platform of doing business in our daily activities, which of the platforms is more convenient for you? Do you prefer using cash? Do you prefer using your card? Or you prefer the e-transactions, which is the mobile money platforms? With me, Fred Duho, for Joy Business. Now, registration of products by the Food and Drugs Authority remains cumbersome and comes with high financial demands. That is according to some producers and exporters in the Bono, Bono East and Ahafo regions. Though foods and drugs produced must meet required standards, producers insist the issue of registration of these products should be less burdensome 
and without hindrances. They complained at a Ministry of Trade and Industry and FDA sensitization program in Sunyane. This is Precious Semivor's report. The Ministry of Trade and Industry has at a sensitization workshop on food quality and safety standards. Compliance in Sunyani in the Bono region builds the capacity of producers, processors, cooks, traders and exporters as well as enhancing their performance. The day's program was in collaboration with the Food and Drugs Authority after clients raised major concerns on producing to meet quality and safety requirements. The ministry believes empowering producers and exporters to operate in accordance with quality and safety standards will go a long way to boost production, quality, market acceptability, profitability and consumer trust. Speaking to join you, some producers said the FDA must take a second look at the cumbersome and high financial demands in the registration of products. They say it remains a major hindrance to producers and many other entrepreneurs who want to venture into production and export. Uh, as producers of uh, herbal products, one of the challenges we face is uh, we need to have constant engagement with FDA so that we will know exactly what they require of us before we go into production. It's the complexity of the forms, uh, it's also about the cost of registration, uh, reg registering every facility, registering every product and the costs that are assigned. Uh, somebody has a capital of, uh, a business that has a capital of just about 500 and the registration process alone is going to cost about 1,000. So it's going to put a person off. Speaking to Joy News, acting head of FDA Bono East and a half regions, Equia Owusu said her outfit is ready to assist and address all bottlenecks at all times in the registration of products. She, however, said producers risk losing their registration certificates should they lower their set standards. How we display our products for sale? display our product, whether it's raw agreed produce, whether it is packaged produce, mm. the storage condition. So we are trying to use education, trying to empower the consumers. If they have the requisite knowledge and they know the dangers of provide, uh, patronizing these items, if you put them out there and somebody will not buy it, definitely you have to take it back. After the registration certificate doesn't mean the end. Mm. It means the conditions under which registered the product for you should be maintained. On his part, the regional director of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Prince Anoba, said they are collaborating with stakeholders such as the Food and Drugs Authority to ensure small-scale business and industries get the expected support for their successful operations. We have a very good collaboration with agencies that deal with quality and safety requirements. Because in Brown Half, we have most of the manufacturing uh, processes are into food. If any small scale business would want support from trade industry, the person is welcome to our office. We will listen to him or her, and the kind of support that as a ministry we can provide to them, whether certifying their product, whether getting capacity building uh, you know, instruments, whatever their problem, if only is within the Ministry of Trade and Industry, we will do our best. And uh, well, as some of the major oil marketing companies have kept prices unchanged at the pumps, at least for now. Now, this is despite the expected increase in prices at the pumps uh, this week in line with the deregulation policy. George Raffi has more in this report. Based on industry data and our calculations, prices of some petroleum products should have gone up by as much as 3% this week. This should mean that a liter of petrol would now be sold at five Ghana cities 36 pesos, translating into 24 Ghana cities, 12 pesos per gallon. Diesel, on the other hand, should be sold at 5 Ghana cities, 25 pesos per liter, translating into 23 Ghana cities, 62 pesos per gallon. However, our checks with some of these major oil marketing companies that should have adjusted their prices on Tuesday this week say they might need a little bit of time before the review is done. Others have told us that they are watching the market before they react. Some analysts have told Joy Business that some of these big players are just looking out for who will take the lead before they react. It would be interesting if these major oil marketing companies indeed go ahead and review their prices, especially when earlier this month prices should have gone down, but they failed to do that. The oil firms in the past have argued that the current application the stabilization levy is really affecting their profits and development.
All right, and so that'll be it for Business Live. Uh, before we wrap up, an important story on our website. I want you to take a look at the media review uh, supplementary budget to, pre to be presented uh, by July 22. That's on Monday. That is important. We'll be following that presentation for you uh, to bring you updates uh, when it happens. That'll be it for Business Live. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Carr. As always, you can go to that website, joybusinessnews.com. We'll see you same time tomorrow.